In this tutorial, we're going to do the initial setup for an advertisement that we're going to animate in Photoshop. I've gathered some files already because I've come up with an idea. It's going to be a little bit cheesy, but I've come up with an idea anyway. Um, and I've found a bunch of images online that are going to support this ad. The idea is that you have a little kitten that will grow up to be a, an older cat, um, and it was helped by eating the right food, which is Purina cat food. Um, I also had some other cat food that I was looking at, but uh, I think I'll just use the one. Anyway, the first thing that you have to do is find some images. So um, one of the things that I want to point out is that I used PNGs whenever possible. The reason why is because then I didn't have to do all the selections. But of course, you're not going to find all of your images are not going, going to be extracted from the backgrounds the way they should. In fact, most of the ones that I've found online have some pretty serious issues here and there. For example, if you get up really close, you'll see that they missed an entire part of that. Um, another one that I might look at has a shadow underneath him, which means that we um, would have to take that out if we wanted to control that ourselves. Um, let's see, I know there's a larger cat, and this one has some mistakes as well. So unless you're doing the selections yourself, you're kind of at the mercy of other people, unless, of course, you take everything into Photoshop and clean it up the way it should be. So I would take your images that whatever you download into Photoshop. I like to put like a sample file underneath or I sometimes make it a really garish color so that it's obvious when there are issues. And you can you can definitely see if you get up real close where the issues are. And you can see that I would need to um, fix this part of that particular selection or let me get that little part out of here. Oop, let's make sure that my flow is much higher. So not perfect, but a lot better. And then you might also do some things such as um, change your selections. Now another thing that you'll notice when you look at this is that this particular graphic um, is not trimmed. So go to image, trim, and you'll see, let's see, I'll do top left pixel, there we go. Um, now you'll see that I've trimmed my graphic to the size that it really needs to be. Now I can delete that and resave that. So one of the things I would definitely point out that you want to do is bring in all the graphics that you're going to be using independently into Photoshop. They should all be done separately and make sure that they're cleaned up. Now another one that I wanted to point out was this. I've got a kitten and it's very yellow um, and this one is a lot more orange, a lot more natural looking. So one of the things I'm going to do is try and make sure that my colors are consistent. So I'm going to copy a little piece of that in here because what I want to do is change the color of the kitten. I'll put the kitten even in front of the other cat so that they match a lot better. So what this means that you're going to need to do is play around with colors and, and other things like that. So if I go to levels, possibly, this is control L, or maybe even if I do one of the adjustments like hue and saturation, I might be able to adjust this so that I get a little bit better color. And right there, just a little bit of hue change and a little bit of desaturation has made the two colors look so much more alike and so much more natural. And so do make sure that you go in and look at all of your assets as individual pieces that you need to clean up. And I said reveal all. Let me do trim, transparent pixels. Okay, so we've got some other things here that we would want to fix. So that means I'd come in here and delete all those things I don't want. Now my favorite method of deleting stuff is not using the erase tool the way I'm using it. I usually would try and get in there and do it manually with um, a pen tool, but I'm doing it quickly for the sake of these videos. All right, so I have just finished cropping um, and fixing that little kitten so that I can use that in my graphic. And then I'll save the original 
again. And so um, last one that I want to do, I just want to trim this a little bit. And hopefully it'll be fixed. I know I have a little problem right there. But I think all of that, those little changes that I've made, um, will make a difference. Now even objects like this, if you know that it's going to be on white, you might not have to change it. But if it's going to be on a different color, then of course you would probably need to make a selection of this. My method, my preference for making a selection for an object, especially one like this, is to use the pen tool. So the pen tool is a very effective way at doing very clean selections. And the nice thing about the pen tool is that you can make the selection, um, test it out, see how good you got, and if it's not perfect, you can go back and reselect it. You can adjust your selection after the fact. So I'm making a really quick selection here. Ooh, needs, that needs to be adjusted just a little bit. There we go. That one slides out quite a distance. And I think for government work, this is probably going to be pretty good. All right. So let's try that real quick. It looks like this one I probably would have wanted to make into a curve. So I can hold down the Alt key with that tool and make it just a little bit nicer. Now, when I go to the Path tool, I can then make a selection from that and see what happens if I turn it into a mask. Now, if I do the technique that I was doing before, which is putting a layer behind it, then when I zoom out, I can really see how accurate that selection is. And it's really not too bad. I think it's good enough to actually use that. So to, the way that I can apply this is I can go ahead and delete that other layer that I don't need. Trim it, of course. I do want to trim it to my transparent pixels. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this as a um, PNG. So I'll save it into the same folder. And I'll save it as a PNG somewhere in here. And then I can close that. Um, I don't think I need to save a copy because I should have saved the PNG. So there's the PNG that I've saved with transparency. So this is all about just getting things ready. Now you also have to come up with what your story is going to be. Once again, my little cat will grow up into a big cat and then we'll show why and that is the, the food that he's eating. So in Photoshop, I need to start bringing some of those things in that I'm going to use. And I also need to make my first document. So in order to create the document, we're going to be using one of the standard web advertisement sizes. Now there are a lot of different sizes out there, but if we want to use one of the international ad sizes, the universal ad sizes, there are a few that are there. Um, but also Google has some ideas as well. For example, these are the four sizes that they say are the best performing ads that they've had. 300 by 250, 360 by 336 by 280, three, uh, 728 by 90, which is called a leaderboard, and then we have the wide skyscraper as well. Well, in Photoshop, if we create a new document, you'll see if we go to web, that we actually have some of these international ad sizes already set up. The 300 by 250 is one of those that we can use. So let's go ahead and use that size and create our first document. Now before I start to save, bring other things in here, I'm going to go ahead and save this ad into my folder where I have um, my GIF or GIF tutorial add. So, and actually I should probably put on there what size it is too. I typically do that. But that's where I'm going to be saving my files. It's going to be in the folder above where the assets are. Now, for the assets that I know that I'm going to bring in, I can select multiple ones of those if I want. 
and I think I'm going to hold off on a couple of them. At least I'll bring the cats in and the food in. And I'll bring these and drag them over into this document. Then I can hit enter. I can scale it if I want beforehand, but I don't really have to. And I want, of course, the kitten to be the smallest. Now, one of the things that you might notice, and there's the Purina cat chow, one of the things you'll notice is that these are coming in as what are called smart objects. This is a major difference from something such as taking an object like this and copying and pasting it into your document. That right there is not really the same thing. The reason why is because these smart objects are referencing the original files. So if I needed to change one of these, I could change the original file and update it, or I can also um, scale these as I want. Whoops, I need to be in the right file here. There we go. I closed any pixels. Oh, somehow it thinks I'm on a path. Well, how did I do that? There we go. So now I can scale this thing down, I can scale it up, and what's cool about it is if I double click on the layer in my layers over in Photoshop, I can open up the original. Now this is huge. Why I have this large of a file, I have no idea. Let me uh, change this image size down to something a little bit more manageable, maybe 500 pixels. I'll never need any higher than that for this particular thing. I'll save it. Let's make the uh, JPEG a little bit less. And there you go. Now it's made it a lot smaller in here, so I just have to scale up. But we haven't done any animation or anything like that, so it's not really going to affect anything. If I go and look at my assets and we look at this particular one, you'll see I have not, I have indeed not changed my asset, my original asset file. And that is still there. What we have is basically a Photoshop document that's embedded within a Photoshop document um, virtually. So this layer is separated in its own Photoshop document, which you don't necessarily see um, until you open it. Anyway, so I've got some basic things here. And one of the things that I'm going to start doing, whoops, let me make sure I have the right layer. I want my cat there. In fact, I might even flip him around because I think that the cat, I want him looking into my scene a little bit. There we go. And then the next one is going to be there. Got to make sure that you select the right layer. Oh, he can be a little bit off the layer. I like to use nudge, by the way, to move things around. That means that you're on the black arrow tool and then you just hit the arrow keys to move them around. It's a great way to nudge. And then finally we have the big guy. <clears throat> so there's my three images of my cat that I'm going to be using in this ad. I've got some pet food that I'm going to have. So let's see, if I have this pet food and I have the little kitten, I'd say that pet food can be pretty small. So what we could say is we need to come up with a message and we'll be doing that in just a minute. Let's see, the last thing will be what's the size of this when we're done with that ad. I think that's pretty good. So now I've got some basic things in here. We might, of course, want to um, save our file before we go on. And let's see what we can do in the next tutorial.